Hi everyone, I'm Ryan with Nostalgia. Was Donkey Kong Country 2 really one of the best platformers Rare ever released? Why did Universal Studios end up suing Nintendo? Was Donkey Kong 2 really what everyone anticipated from the series? What sort of surprises did Rare have in store for gamers after the success of the first game? Let's take a dive into these questions and more in this video. Donkey Kong Country was released in November of 1994 by Nintendo and the British game development company Rare, where they would go on to showcase the new amazing CGI graphics from Nintendo and Rare. But before all of this, Universal Studios would try to take down Nintendo's dream of having a new IP. During release of the original Donkey Kong for the NES and early arcade cabinets in their early 1980s, and which would go on to sell around 500,000 units in North America and would go on to help push the next installment in the series to untold heights. Universal Studios would go on to have major problems with Nintendo's new IP. Universal Studios ended up suing Nintendo saying they used King Kong as their main character knowingly. The courts would go on to judge in favor of Nintendo stating that the characters from the game were different in many ways to the film King Kong. This would go on to be a start of something truly amazing for Nintendo with their new and upcoming game in the Donkey Kong series, and would also be very lucrative for partner and game developer Rare. The story for this installment of the Donkey Kong series was very different from the last Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong has been kidnapped by Captain K. Rool, one of King K. Rool's alter egos, hoping that the Kongs would give up their banana horde to save him. You take control of Diddy Kong, Donkey Kong's nephew and also Dixie Kong, Diddy Kong's girlfriend. Off on their adventure to save Donkey Kong, they travel to Crocodile Island where they first come upon the Gangplank Galleon. A pirate ship docked in the Bay of Crocodile Island would be the first place Diddy and Dixie would go searching for Donkey Kong. The first area of eight different varying lands, each containing many different amounts of other areas within the worlds, you would have to get through to progress to the next land or area, as well as a boss always at the end of every area that you would have to beat. As they make their way through Gangplank Galleon, they are faced with many different environments. From the deck of the Galleon, all the way to swimming through the underside of the ship, and finally being atop the mast of the ship to take down Crow, the giant vulture that throws eggs that they have to avoid. After getting past Crow, they find themselves in Crocodile Cauldron, where they find out that not every land in the Crocodile Island would be as easy to get through. They battle their way in and out of Crocodile Cauldron, and find themselves upon Cleaver, a giant sword that swings at them and shoots projectiles also. After besting the possessed sword, they make their way to Crimque, a nasty vile swamp with a shipwreck in the middle of it. They battle their way through the swamp, jumping from crocodiles, and even at one point you actually have to traverse the wrecked ship. Finally they end up reaching Cudgel, a big Kremlin, with an even bigger club covered in nails. With some quick thinking, they blow up Cudgel, sending him deep into the swamp. As they make their way deeper into Crocodile Island, they come upon a giant abandoned amusement park called Crazy Crimland. Sadly, there will be no fun to be had here, as it is covered in crocs and giant wasps. Climbing their way through the amusement park, they find their way into a giant wasp nest in the amusement park. Climbing their way deeper into the wasp nest, they run into an enormous wasp by the name of King Zing. With some help from Squawks, the parrot, they easily topple the giant wasp, getting them halfway to saving Donkey Kong. Climbing higher on the island, they wander into Gloomy Gulch, a ghostly place that's extremely haunted. Traversing the haunted woods and glades of this area, they run into many ghosts as well as a skeleton crocodile. After which they find themselves upon Crow's Nest, which they climb to the top to find a ghost version of Crow from Gangplank Galleon 
known as Creepy Crow. They make easy work of the Spirit of Crow, and quickly make their way higher into the Crocodile Island. They end up at K. Rule's Keep. At this point, they are so high on the island that most of the land here is frozen and covered in ice and snow. Sliding past many enemies and even having to make a mad dash up to the top of the tower with the help of Rattly the Rattlesnake. They finally find Donkey Kong aboard Captain K. Rule's airship, but he's tied up and Captain K. Rule is beating him senseless. The time has finally come for Diddy and Dixie to save Donkey Kong, staring down the barrel of Captain K. Rule's blunderbuss. They leap into action to put an end to K. Rule's terror and save Diddy's uncle. Dodging cannonballs, they quickly make easy work of K. Rule. Thankfully, after the last hit, Donkey Kong wiggles his way out of the restraints and lands the final blow on K. Rule, sending him flying into the ocean below. But that's not where things end for them. They finally have to make their way to Crocodile Core. Located in the middle of Crocodile Island, where a giant crocodile head sits with a strange light coming from it. Upon entering, they find Captain K. Rule, this time covered in seaweed and fish coming from his blunderbuss. The Kongs quickly jump into action, in which finally putting an end to K. Rule's terror, there is shaking everywhere as the island is going to come apart. All the Kongs decide it's a good idea to go back to Kong Island to be safe in which they watch from a distance as the island sinks into the ocean. But they notice that a ship is sailing away in the distance. Could it be Captain K. Rule? Maybe their adventure's not over just yet. Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest would go on to be the second best game in 95 to be released on consoles and would be the sixth best game on the Super Nintendo going to sell a little over 4 million copies. Personally, I felt as if this installment in the series would be one of the only ones to do it all right and not overdo things with characters and gaming mechanics. The graphics were amazing, and as well as many more enemies to encounter and even varying enemy types. One of the only areas that the public didn't seem to be very fond of was the level of increased difficulty in this installment compared to the other. Many found it hard to play. If you were not used to Donkey Kong, it would be hard to get the hang of it for newer players. Nonetheless, it would go on to be extremely successful for Rare and Nintendo both, furthering the future of both of the companies. If you have made it this far, then stop what you're doing and hit the like button and as well as subscribe for more from Nostalgia. I also wanted to say a special thank you to everyone that watches my channel. It's what keeps the channel going. And until next time, guys.